Hello. Today I'd like to show you how you can measure for your borders so that you get your borders sitting nicely around your quilt top. So here I've got my quilt top all pieced. I've joined together my blocks into rows and I've joined my blocks together and I've pressed it so it's all sitting nicely and I'm very happy with it. It's a very, very busy quilt. And I've decided that I'm going to add three borders around it. Um, but so it, for my first border initially, I need to measure it up to see how big my quilt is. Now what I usually do when I'm making a border is I actually like to calculate the size of my blocks and these blocks are six inches square finished and I've got five of them across the quilt so if I multiply five times six inches that's going to be 30 inches plus I've still got a seam allowance at either end so that's my half inch a quarter inch either side so my distance if everything is right and my quarter inch seam allowance is right my distance should be 30 and a half inches. Now we've got quite a few seams in here so if our seam allowance is out even just a, a whisker it's going to make a difference because it, if it's a slightly under the seam allowance or slightly over slightly under it's going to make it slightly bigger if it's we're slightly big on our seam allowance it's going to bring it in slightly so you will get variations you can't necessarily expect it to be the calculated size although I kind of like it to be the calculated size but that's one of my little quirks. So the best way to do it is to measure the actual quilt in three places. So don't measure along your outside edge because that could be a little bit wavy. So measure in a few inches and what we should be getting is something in the order of the 30 and a half inches. And mine is looking pretty close um, to 30 and a half inches there. Then I'm going to measure it again. So we're measuring three times. So pretty much down the middle of the quilt. And again, I'm pretty close to my 30 and a half, which is very exciting. And a third time further towards the other side. And again, I'm fairly close to my 30 and a half. So this is looking really good for my quilt being about the right size and my seam allowance being reasonably accurate. But as I said, seam allowances can vary, fabrics vary. Now I'm going to turn the quilt around and measure it the other way. Now my quilt in theory is square. So we're hoping that it's going to be a similar measurement the other way. Um, but of course if it was a rectangular quilt it wouldn't be. So this one again is pretty close to 30 and a half. So my quilt is sitting fairly flat. You don't want to stretch it, you don't want it to be all bunched up or anything. It should just sort of be sitting how you pressed it. And that one's 30 and a half as well, close enough. And that one also is 30 and a half. So I'm really pleased with that result. But if you've got three slightly different measurements, you kind of want to take the middle one the, or the average of your three measurements. So that if you were kind of half an inch more and half an inch less, take the bit in the middle so that it's an average and you'll find that it'll work out quite well. Fabrics are very movable commodity, so nothing fits absolutely exactly. You can't be so very accurate at times because the fabric has a little say in the matter. Um, you can be close to accurate, but there's always going to be little anomalies when you're working with fabric. So I'm just going to be cutting my borders next. Uh, for this, I'm actually going to be putting three borders on. And I've laid the fabrics out here just to see what it's going to look like. I thought I'd bring in another colour. So I'm going to put the same very busy dotty fabric um, around so that my little five patches kind of float on that. Then I wanted to bring in another colour, so I'm doing a narrow one of the yellow and then I'm putting a slightly wider one of the dot again and then I'm going to bind with my green. But to get my first border, which I've cut two and a half inches, I've cut the strips already but I haven't cut them to length yet, I've cut them two and a half inches wide. So I now know that if I put, the, the borders I'm going to do are just the straight borders, so two sides will be slightly longer than the other two sides. So that the first two sides you put on are the same length as your quilt. So I usually do sides, if it's a rectangular quilt, I usually do the sides first and the top and bottom afterwards. Um, and this is a smaller quilt, so I'm not having to join any strips. Um, so I'm just working on a smaller quilt at the moment, and so we'll go with that. So I've got to cut myself two strips, one for each side that's 30 and a half inches long. And they're two and a half inches wide. And then I can cut my other two, because my quilt measurement was 30 and a half in the other direction too. They need to be a little bit longer because they've got to come past where that border will be on the sides. And because it's going to be a two inch finished border, we need to add that on at each end. So we've got a 30 inch quilt, or 30 and a half inch, we've cut the first lot of borders, plus we're adding another two inches each side, so that's another four inches. So we now want to make it 34 and a half inches. So for our first border, we're going to cut 
two at 30 and a half inches long and our second border because our strips are two and a half inches wide cut we're going to cut two at 34 and a half inches long and they will then cover the ends of that first border. When it comes to doing the next border, which is a narrower border, again you can pretty much calculate it from, from where you are now and just your first two sides will be the same length as, as these longer two sides of your first border because that's now come out to that same size. So you can cut the first two, in my case at the 34 and a half inches, then because this border is narrower, it's only one inch finished, a one and a half cut, I need to add on an inch each side for the longer strips, so they're going to be cut 36 and a half and so on. So you add on the amount of your border each time, but that first board time you cut is the same as the last of the previous border. I hope that makes sense and I haven't confused you all. Um, just be careful that you're not stretching your quilt, that you're not doing things like like that with it and I do cut my borders to length and then I attach them and I can show you that in another video rather than just sewing the strip on and then cutting it off because what can happen there is that it might stretch a little bit as you're sewing or it might just pull in a little bit and you could end up with the opposite sides not being the same length and you'll find you'll get a much better result if you take an average of those three measurements as I suggested and cut your two opposite sides the same length so that everything kind of fits at that point with the border and you'll find that the quilt will just rearrange itself to fit within that. If you make your borders right, the other bit will work for you as well. So hopefully that will help you with measuring up for your borders. Thank you.